Outdoors Delmarva covers everything outdoors. Including real hunting and fishing situations involving wildlife. We do our best every week to keep it tasteful, but discretion is advised. Now enjoy the show. This week on Outdoors Del Marva, we are trading deer season for the holiday season. Join us by carriage and on foot for some local festivities. Then from field to feast. We have a real nice crop on the outside. Our mid-season right. Canada goose hunt right yields there. delicious results when a local like chef crazy. lets us in on this gourmet wild game recipe. And it's the closest thing to a real life snow globe you might ever see. We'll head out in Chopper 16 to share the skies with these high flyers. Plus, we'll play Santa as we draw a winner for our latest product giveaway and take a look at some of your viewer photos. Right now on Outdoors Del Marva. Pull. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas, Del Marva. Hi everybody and Merry Christmas. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker. And I'm Captain Willie Dykes and we're so happy you made us part of your holiday weekend. For the most part this week, we've traded in the bulk of the fishing and the deer hunting seasons for the Christmas season. And we have some great stories coming up. Yeah, we sure do and we'll get to those in just a couple of minutes. But first, Willie, I did think it would be interesting to share a little bit of information that we got uh, earlier this week from the Maryland DNR, some preliminary harvest numbers from the Maryland rifle season, which of course uh, the two week season just wrapped up two weeks ago. And according to the DNR, harvest numbers were down this year from last year, down about 9% in fact. In all, there were just over 13,600 bucks taken in Maryland and just over 27,000 does taken by hunters with rifles. Mike, I'm guessing the weather might have had something to do with those numbers. And I think you're probably onto something there, Willie. According to the DNR, yeah, the weather was a little bit more windy and colder, which is obviously going to keep some hunters indoors during that rifle season. But uh, on top of that, they say that there was actually uh, good weather conditions back in the spring and the summer, led to a pretty good natural acorn crop. So what that means is when deer have a good natural food source nearby, well, they don't have to move around so much, means that guys like you and I are going to see fewer deer when we're out hunting. That makes sense. Sure does. But to get back into the holiday spirit this week, we begin with a trip to Worcester County, where a trip back in time really is possible, and it won't cost you a penny. All righty. For Randy Davis, the Christmas season sounds a little something like this. Prancer, up dancer, away, boy. And after years of providing carriage rides on Maryland's eastern shore, he's plenty used to the view. These guys here, I take them 18 to 20 miles a day uh, without a problem. I mean, they can probably go farther than that. As long as I give them a break every once in a while, uh, they can handle it pretty well. Despite their reindeer getup, these Haplinger horses' real names are Jake and John. And in the weeks leading up to Christmas, they've become quite the attraction outside the Atlantic Hotel in small town Berlin. Up, dancer, up, prancer. Oh my God, this thing's spectacular. I, uh, this is my first year down here doing the carriage rides for Christmas, and they really put on a good show. I mean, for everybody. I mean, we come out today, and they, they had baked goods out here, and, and I love baked goods. <laughs> you know. The appetite for this old time spin around the block is only growing. And with each hour, it seems so is the line. Says, Touch the ground, bend your knees, but the bend chilly weight ground, is easily ground, remedied with a warm-up activity. Touch the ground, bend your knee, bend your other knee, turn around. All that was and by the time you know it... Are you guys excited? Yeah! yeah. yeah. How long have you guys been waiting? Like an hour. A lot of people have never been exposed to horses. And we like to tell people about horses and, and what they do and what they like to eat. And, and children that live in the city, a lot of times they don't get to see horses and see them in a, in a state like they are now. I think it's beautiful. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Very, very really pretty. Really well done, and it's nice that there's still a few things that are free. But that's really just a bonus. Hey, yep, Gary. Right. Yep. This is great. The best holiday thing going. Consider it a Christmas gift. 
and an experience that's galloping its way to becoming a tradition. And with holiday traditions like that happening up and down Delmarva, it's just a reminder of the type of special place we live in. Coming up next on Outdoors Delmarva, Captain Willie goes flying with the snow geese. See these winter visitors from the Chopper 16 perspective. Plus, we'll spread some Christmas cheer as we announce the winner of our latest product giveaway. But first, did you know? Since the late 1940s, the Haplinger breed, of course, has become a popular breed across the world. But from which country does this playful working horse originate? The answer, when we come back. Outdoors Del Marva is sponsored by Lewis Harbor Marina. Diamond State Pole Buildings. And Shooter's Choice. Outdoors Del Marva will be right back. Did you know? The Hafflinger breed of horse originated in the Alps region of Austria. Its hardworking and friendly demeanor has since spread its popularity across the world. They're high flying experts, and they've become part of the winter landscape here on Del Marva. From the ground, their numbers are impressive, but my favorite place to watch snow geese is from the air. The swirling clouds of white over Del Marva's winter fields are just as likely to be snow geese these days as snowflakes. Protected resting areas like the Prime Hook Refuge in the background and a short commute to fields brimming with waste grain and fresh tender winter wheat make this a popular stopover for the migrating flocks. Their numbers have increased dramatically in recent years. Hunting was banned in 1916 when the total population was around 3,000. Now, with over 7 million birds, they are threatening to overstress their breeding grounds in the Canadian Arctic. Their habit of pulling up young plants by the root causes lasting damage to their nesting grounds as well as the fields along their migration route. You can see bare ground in the middle of this wheat field and they're still at it. If you look closely in one of these goose storms, you can see they fly in small family groups. The parents mate for life and the young stay with them for two years before they choose mates of their own. They're part of the landscape this time of year, and for any student of aerial flight, watching these travelers carve the air with their black-tipped wings is endlessly fascinating. I love flying with those guys. You know, as we celebrate the true meaning of Christmas, we also take time out to remember old friends. A few years ago, I had the honor of taking Scorchy Taws up in Chopper 16 for a ride I'll never forget. I know there are a lot of you folks out there wondering where Scorchy Talls is and what he's been up to. Well, I'll tell you all you need to know about that. When I called him at home in Crisfield last week and asked him if he'd like to have a ride in Chopper 16, he said, if I can take my camera. So you know Scorchy is still at it. So have you, have you uh, used a digital camera? Oh, yeah, I've got one. That's, on that's the kind it's you're digital, using now, uh, yeah. Got a Nikon digital camera. Uh-huh. Yeah, I never leave home without it. That's a view of Tangier from Crisfield, so it's... Uh... These places are so close together up here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm going from Crisfield to Winona to Tangier in a matter of, of minutes. I went ashore at uh, Bootsworth Island once to do a story. I was full of unexploded shrapnel and everything. But you know the one thing that impressed me most? there that I can never forget. They had mosquitoes there as big as turkeys. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> wow. The big mosquitoes, huh? I mean big mosquitoes. Oh. Can we tilt this way a bit? Oh, uh, let's see. Yeah, yeah. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. And it was good having you with me today. Well, Willie, I'll tell you something. I don't know when I've enjoyed anything any better than this. This has been wonderful. Coming up next on Outdoors Del Marva, 
Mike hunted them. Now I'll take these wild geese from field to feast with a local chef. We'll be right back. I mean, I'm, I'm going from Chris Mill to Winona to Tangier in a matter of, of minutes. Scorchy's Corner Classics are sponsored by Taz Marine Insurance. Thanks for watching Outdoors Del Marva. I'm Mike Parker. Well, you may remember from a few weeks back, I showed you I had the pleasure of goose hunting alongside some friends in Dorchester <laughs> County. And the result of that morning in the field was a double serving of wild goose meat to go. <laughs> I admit some of that ended up on the table that very night. But I also passed some of that goose on to Captain Willie, who took it to a local chef. With a plentiful and growing goose population and liberal bag limits this year, there's a pretty good chance that waterfowlers on Delmarva have a goose or two in the fridge. And we're here at Sobo's in Salisbury with Chef Patrick Fanning, and he's going to show us how to make these into a sumptuous holiday meal. And Patrick, I understand there's a little prep involved before we get started. Oh, yes, Willie. Uh, as you can know, uh, geese are a little bit tough, so in order to make them uh, palatable, we like to brine them in a brine that consists of our Rise Up Stout, Worcestershire, raisins, blackberries, and shiitake mushrooms for about 24 hours before we cook 24 hours, okay. And what we have here is an iron pan. Inside the iron pan is a little bit of applewood smoked bacon fat that's been rendered out. Over here we have that same brine that I was talking about. We're greasing it down with a little bit more brown sugar and a couple more blackberries just to give it some nice consistency. As you can see, those raisins and mushrooms are just floating up to the top. And over here we have a little bit of duck fat risotto that we're going to cook. And some nice roasted asparagus should be coming out in just a second. So you're gonna, it's basically gonna be a visual thing rather than a timing. Do it until it has a nice crust on it. See how it's starting to pull together now? Yes. It should have a real nice crust on the outside. Oh yeah. All right, so we're gonna stick that one right there. Let that cook for another 30, 40 seconds. Let it go to char on that side. We'll stick it right in the broiler, let it cook the rest of the way just to about medium rare. And what is risotto? A risotto is um, a arborio rice that is slow poached in chicken stock, and you just keep adding a little bit more water and a little bit more water until the rice comes to like a nice creamy fruition. Uh -huh. Over here we have a cranberry compote where we take fresh cranberries, we do it with a little bit of uh, Guggenheim cab red wine, brown sugar, garlic and shallots and cook it down just to make almost like a, a cranberry sauce. You mind if I taste that? Go ahead, enjoy. That sounded really delicious. Sweet and tart, <laughs> just right. Goose flesh should be almost done. So now we're gonna remove it from the heat. It's got a beautiful char in it, Willie. See it now? Backside, uh -huh. black all the way yeah. around. We're gonna cut it right on the bias. So you want to kind of cut it this way and kind of break those onions down okay. to a little bit more tender. So we start the plate with our risotto. Good little dousing of the cranberry. That goes right on top. Boiled okay. asparagus. A little green on the side. Right there. The raisins and the mushrooms. Oh, the smell. Creamy and smooth and... Beautiful holiday colors, a Christmas goose. And now the moment of truth. That's a beautiful plate and the smell is just perfect, but let's see how it tastes. That's good. Tender, savory. That is a good goose dinner. Glad you enjoyed it, Willie. Thanks, Thank you Patrick. very much for coming by. That was fun. Still ahead on Outdoors Del Marva, we'll go walking in one local town filled with holiday cheer. But first, did you know one pound of wild goose meat contains approximately 340 calories? Did You Know is sponsored by the Maryland Coastal Bays Program. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm astounded. I'm waiting for 
trying to cowboy myself through this. <laughs> that is giddy up. That is giddy good up. stuff. Outdoors Del Marva will be right back. You gonna eat that whole thing? No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, getting outdoors is as easy as you make it. And one town in Wicomico County makes it even easier around the holidays. Outdoors Delmarva producer Chuck Regner put together these sights and sounds from the Quantico walking tour. The Quantico tour is for our streetlight fund. Uh, this is our main fundraiser to pay for the streetlights that we have in town. This is our 21st year, and it's just grown in, in size each year. It varies year by year, but we normally have at least uh, seven or eight of the homes, plus the churches and the country store antiques shop. and enjoy the, the tour every year. It's really nice. Merry Christmas! Good night, folks! Coming up next on Outdoors Del Mar, we'll spend time with the area's premier nature photographer and draw a winner for a copy of his latest book. Outdoors Del Marva will be right back. Outdoors Del Marva is sponsored by Lewis Harbor Marina, Diamond State Pole Buildings, and Shooter's Choice. Well, no doubt some boys and girls woke up to a brand new puppy or kitten by the tree this Christmas. Good luck, parents. But out in the wild, those little miracles usually happen around spring or summertime. Photographer Kevin Fleming has more on baby animals in this week's Wild Del Marva. Well, this would have to be the cute segment, photographing baby animals. They're cute as can be. Usually they're uh, inquisitive about you, and you can get pretty close to them. The parent, they're not as wary as the parents. This is a, uh, a baby great blue heron chick and when I got uh, maybe a little too close on this one he uh, gave me the big squawk and I got the picture and, and moved on. This uh, young eastern cottontail bunny was born right at my back door so I found it one morning and, and photographed it with a macro lens just right there at the house didn't have to go far I got a pretty cute picture of a little baby bunny. A very close-up shot of a uh, very inquisitive uh, baby gray squirrel very curious about me and it actually jumped from the tree to my lens and landed right on my lens. Pretty funny when the animals actually jump right into the camera. Gulls are masters of camouflage with their uh, shells and their babies. They're, they're spotted, they're hard to find. Uh, they're made that way so that they can't be seen from overhead because other gulls could take them, other predators. So one morning on Smith Island, I found this uh, gull colony and found a uh, young gull coming out of the egg, which was a real nice moment. Here are some two baby black vultures. Certainly faces only a mother could love. And they love to nest in abandoned farm buildings. This happens to be an old stone silo. If you see a, a vulture sitting on a 
abandoned farmhouse or shed in the springtime. Often there's a, you can find the uh, vulture nest underneath. From pretty much March and April till uh, early summer, you can find baby animals. Thanks, Kevin. And right now, somebody out there is going to win a signed copy of Kevin's new book, Wild Delmarva. And I'm Willie, we'll put this back on the mantle and I'll give this a couple spins around. Okay, mix them up, Mike. Tell me when. One more. That's good. All right, pick a good one. Digging deep. Lots of postcards coming in this week. Let me see. Showing the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. Aaron Tucker from Stevensville, Maryland. You won a copy of Kevin's book. And don't forget, photographer Kevin Fleming's new book, Wild Delmarva, is now on sale. To order your copy, go to wilddelmarva.com. And remember, $1 from each purchase will be donated to the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. To enter to win future product giveaways featured on Outdoors Delmarva, send a postcard with your name, address, and phone number to Outdoors Delmarva, care of WBOC-TV, 1729 North Salisbury Boulevard, Salisbury, Maryland, 21801. It's time now to share some of the pictures sent in by our own Outdoors Delmarva viewers. Let's start with this whopper of a striper caught in Delaware. Tyler Smith from Dover caught this 51-pounder while chunking with Bunker near the Anchorage on Delaware Bay last month. Thanks to our buddy Joe Morris from Lewis Harbor Marina for passing along this picture. Here's Jacob Michelson of Salisbury with a nice eight-pointer shot on Maryland Youth Day. The deer was shot in the Snow Hill area of Worcester County. Here's another nice buck taken by hunter David Seacott from Dorchester County. This big eight-pointer was harvested on the first morning of the Maryland rifle season. And how about something with some wings? Thanks to Alan Sklar from Ocean City for sending along this picture of a bald eagle spotted on Assateague Island. Well, we love sharing your outdoor photos here on the show, so please keep them coming our way. You can upload them directly to OutdoorsDelmarva.com using Flickr or just email me at mparker at wboc.com. Well, Mike, just like Christmas itself, it's hard to believe this week's show is almost over. Time sure flies by this time of year. Yeah, it sure does. Seems like we just put the Christmas tree up, got it decorated, and now it's time to take her down. And then maybe we'll leave her up for just one more week. What do you say? Maybe. Maybe? <laughs> All right, we'll have to work that out between uh, this week and New Year's. Well, I hope you had a great Merry Christmas, and thank you so much for joining us this holiday weekend. For Captain Willie Dykes, I'm Mike Parker, reminding you to get outdoors, Delmarva. Pull. This is Santa Claus reminding you to get outdoors, Delmarva. Ho, 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 ho.